Hello, everyone. I think I'm live. Uh, at least the last I checked. <laughs> I did have a birthday yesterday, so birthdays are always a little bit uh, <laughs> in, in, anxiety inducing. I don't know about you, but anyway, here I am. I'm still alive and I'm on alive with you today. Um, thanks for joining me. And if you are here live, if you wouldn't mind typing where you're coming from, and uh, it's just always fun to see um, where you are. I may not be able to acknowledge you in the moment, but I will later uh, when, I, when I look at the live. Um, also, if you catch the replay, it'd be wonderful if you typed in the chat um, that you're catching the replay. That way I know who's actually here live and who's actually on the replay. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm really excited about talking to you today because really this is i've been kind of leading into this but I, i'm really focusing a little bit more i think on what sound healing actually does what i actually do um and i know some of you may be curious some of you may have had sound healing sessions before you might have done you know sound therapy sessions some of you are healers yourselves um so i don't have to con convince you about anything really probably um, but sound is, is very a specific uh, way to work with energy. And um, as I've shared with many people, and, and I, most of you know who I am, but in case you don't, I'm Sharon Buck, and, and I'm an intuitive sound alchemist. And I've been a musician, a professional musician, most of my life. I mean, I started as, a, you know, learning piano lessons at age six and taking singing lessons at that time and continued through that, um, through my adult life, um, also studying the pipe organ, which is also uh, one of my favorite instruments. And I realized the connection here seems may seem like a leap, but between singing bowls and, and pipe organs, but um, there's, there's actually a fair amount of commonality there. Um, and when I'm playing the singing bowls, I feel like I've got a little orchestra, and that's how I felt when I played the organ, when I first laid my hands on a pipe organ with the sound, the air rushing through those pipes, it was like, oh my gosh, I just want to be doing this. I mean, this is just powerful. It's live, it's air passing through those pipes. And it, it, it was just inspirational. I'll never forget the first time. I mean, I've heard them before, but, but when I first played one, it was just super powerful. And so now I get to share my love for for sound with you in a very real way, even though it's virtual. I mean, a lot of you have already commented that you feel things in your body when you're listening to the sound bath. And that's that's just a half an hour of, of me with the singing bowls and, and sometimes other instruments. But um, you, this kind of thing can work very viscerally. And a lot of us know this when we listen to recordings of music. I mean, those are not live but we can feel very moved and very um, animated or very, we can feel emotions that um, we didn't know we were experiencing until all of a sudden they come out. Um, I had that experience the other day when I watched a fabulous movie. And if you haven't seen it, if you're an empath, you've got to see this movie. Thanks to Dr. Judith Orloff. Um, she highly recommended this movie. It's called My Octopus Teacher. And it's on Netflix and I, I have to highly recommend it. Um, I, I don't want to give away too much either. So, but it, 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 it is a very, it's a different, it's, it's, it's totally different film. And, um, but it will really, again, I felt it viscerally in my body while I was watching the movie. Um, so we, we experience these things virtually all the time. So when people say, well, how does sound healing work and how can it possibly work virtually? Well, that's, that's one of the things I, I mentioned. The other would be, uh, you know, we, we never think twice about radio waves um, <clears throat> or, you know, these days TV or cell phones, for goodness sake. How many of us actually know how a cell phone works? I know I don't, um, but we rely on them all the time. Internet, all of these things, they work through the airwaves and their energy. Yeah. So anyway, a lot of you know this already. But I, I wanted to say, today I'm talking about opposites. And when we talk about opposites, um, I, I mean, it's one of my favorite topics as well. 
it, uh, in school when I go to a class and, and, and my favorite thing was going, you know, connecting the dots between English class and then I'd hear something in social studies and I go, wait a minute, I see a connection here or in, in biology or uh, computer science or, or, you know, it was like, wow, this is, I'm starting to see all kinds of connections and, and they see opposites and and I've just always been interested in that. So it's it's fun that I'm talking about this with you today. And I, you know, this is just a, a short live, so I, I tend to try to pack too much in. Um, but I, I, I just really want to talk to you about this because it does relate to what uh, the sound healing that I'm going to be talking to you about. So when we're talking about opposites, and I'm having a little technical glitch here. <laughs> I love it with tech glitches, don't you? All right, let's just try this again. So, <clears throat> yeah, so we talk about the polar opposites of our lives. Obvious, an obvious one would be positive and negative. Um, you know, we, we sometimes talk about it in terms of dualism. Um, light and dark, love and hate. There's a lot of that playing out right now. Up and down, yeah, depression feeling great. Um, you know, resistance and flow is another one. Vulnerable and guarded. Black and white. And old and new. Easy and hard. Masculine and feminine. Or yin and yang, however you want to look at it. And I also <clears throat> am always intrigued too by fixed mindset. I don't know if, how many of you, years ago I read a book and I forgot the title of it, but it focused on fixed mindset versus growth mindset. And that captured my attention at the time. Um, I've been a, a music teacher also for a large part of my adult life. And um, I was intrigued with that. You know, why are some students harder to teach than others? And yeah, there's that personality thing and uh, do you click or don't you click? Um, <clears throat> or what they're looking for and what you offer. But there is a piece in there um, that I came across that, that was very revealing to me. When I read this book, it was like, yeah, this is totally it. Um, or a big part of the puzzle is the, the people who just wanted me to hand them um, a technique, um, you know, so they could become a better singer, uh, were not successful. Um, and, and the people that I taught that wanted to learn from me and learn whatever it was I had to teach them and were willing to push the edge and try something new that maybe wasn't comfortable, they're the ones who improved. They're the ones who actually, in my book, succeeded. Now, of course, we can get into a discussion about what success is, of course. But that, that feeling, that sense of, wow, you know, I saw it over and over again. It was the hardworking students that would, would do well. And I mean, I have a student right now, or at least was before the pandemic, you know, that was starting to make some big breaks in, um, in music theater. In, uh, in LA, and I've had other students in the classical realm um, have similar. And yeah, there was a part of talent in there, but boy, a lot of it had to do with that willingness to just jump in and do it and not know what the outcome was, but trusting me enough, um, and I know that's a big part of it, trusting that in our connection and what I had to offer and going, yeah, I'm willing, I'm willing to do this even if it's difficult and painful and the day-to-day -day grunge. I mean, we all know that. So I digress, but it's all tied in. So here I am talking about opposites. And I looked up and, and, you know, yesterday was my birthday and I was just intrigued. Yeah, full moon, you know, that's pretty cool. Full moon on my birthday, that's cool. But then I, I realized, because I'm not an expert in this at all, um, I didn't know when I chose this theme that the full moon was in Leo last night and if any of you know first of all the full moon you know the moon is opposite the sun they're polar opposites and then Leo and Aquarius apparently are polar opposites as well being in opposite sides of the zodiac wheel so I go wow <laughs> talk about opposites uh, I had I really didn't know that when I planned this so we're tracking somehow somehow so we had all of that going on and then Interestingly enough, one of the, the little article I read, the emotional meaning of January 2021 with the full moon, that the full moon in, in January has a lot to do with courage. 
And as you know, I've been talking about courage and I've also been talking about change. Um, so I thought that was fascinating. And then the essence of Leo is symbolic of the birth of authenticity. Um, so I could go on and on, but uh, it's just fascinating. I couldn't have said it better. It's, you know, about inner strength and um, our, you know, our opposites sometimes get us into trouble, but it can also push us to new growth, to our cutting edge. I also like to talk about balance, and um, a lot of you who know me know I like to talk about self-care, and that's all about balance. So yesterday I took a big chunk of the day off. You know, I just needed a day off. Um, so I'm pondering that, and you know what, the daily challenge of this, um, and especially as healers, how we have to take care of ourselves. Well, we have to work on ourselves first, and, and that ties in with the self-care. And so that whole idea of inside out, which is actually part of the group experience I'm offering this weekend, and I have one more opening. So if any of you are interested, it's a great way to dip your toe into a little bit more of what sound healing can do for you, very specifically. Because I'll be working with a small group, and we'll also be spending time individually working on anything you want to work on. It won't be a long time, but it will, it, 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 you'd be amazed what can happen in just a few minutes. So, balance is really about stability and grounding also, as well as this play between change and movement, okay? I mean, if we keep our bodies in, like if I sat here all day, I would not be a healthy body. Bodies need to move. We also need to be grounded though. And I, I can't tell you how many people feel better just after grounding. I do believe that that's a lot what the singing bowls do for people is, is they actually relax enough into the experience that they start to feel connected to an, you know, grounding energy. And that's the earth energy, Mother Earth. <clears throat> so um, I wanted to show you this because I don't know if you can see this. I tried to find it online, but anyway, uh, a colleague of mine shared this with me. And uh, this is just basically showing um, some of the energy field around the body, very rudimentary. It's, you know, kind of a coloring book um, with the chakras uh, on the body, but it also shows an interesting point above, I can't do this mirroring, a point above and below. And um, you notice the point below um, in biofield tuning, which is part of what I do with tuning forks, is that's, that's called the earth star, okay? And you can just think of it as earth. And earth is, is, an, is the, um, has a negative charge. So we feel that connection from our feet, which, is the positive charge and all of a sudden it's like a magnet our feet are drawn to the earth and a lot of you know about earthing and grounding and all of that well in tuning we actually can get that aligned better and you'd be surprised and not so surprising that many people have been feeling ungrounded these days during the pandemic right well then the opposite end of the pole if you like is I can't do this, uh, is the top of the head or somewhere, you know, about all of this is about, you know, five or six inches away from both points. Um, we call it the sun star or the sun energy. And this is a positive charge. And so that, that also is out on a lot of people. It depends. If you do a lot of meditating, it might be better than if you don't. Um, that's our connection to the divine, our source energy, literally. Um, but for us to be healthy, we need to be connected at both points. So it's, it's like a battery, if you think of it that way. And so, you know, both ends of the battery need to be plugged in, if you like, um, to, to actually charge and to have the energy flow through the battery. So that's a very rudimentary, um, uh, you know, idea. But the bottom line is... It's, it's true for our bodies and for what I believe is true. And you think about the chakra system lining up with the endocrine system. <clears throat> and um, first of all, if those things are out, we have no charge. 
uh, we're walking around, you know, dragging around, um, limping along, uh, you know, it's one thing to feel that at the end of the day, but if you're feeling it during the day, there may be a problem with, with those parts, those, those ter battery terminals, okay? And then there's the other issue of being blocked in the center of our, through our bodies. And those are the chakras, and chakras are energy wheels, okay? And it, that's, what, that's what the meaning of the word chakra means. And these energy wheels, and this is you know, based in lots of ancient tradition and ancient knowledge. This is not something I just came up with. Um, these, if they're blocked, if any one of them is blocked, the energy doesn't flow very well. In fact, it, it can cause disease. Okay, so we, we all, all heard of people who die of heartbreaks, right? Um, you know, or uh, have, you know, a cancer um, in the abdomen. You know, and if, if the digestive fire or system isn't working well, all things can be off there, and then it affects the entire body. The digestive system is like another, it, you know, like another, it works like another brain when we talk about our, our gut instincts. So... Anyway, I'm digressing because you can tell I'm excited about this. But anyway, so now add to that the fact that there's an energy field around our bodies. And about five to six feet out, um, it's, like, it's like rings on a tree. And uh, this idea that each, every year of your life and every day basically from, from when you were born, to where you are now can be tracked through that energy field. Now, I didn't come up with this. This is biofield tuning. If you want to look into more of that, Eileen McCusick, um, my mentor, is an expert at this. And she just wrote another book if you want to look into that. So there's a lot that's being discovered about this. And this is hy hypothetical for now, but they're, they're doing science studies all the time. Um, and so more information keeps coming out. But there we are. And then we come in, and I can actually find spots in the field on people, and other people can too when you're trained to do this, can actually find where places are stuck, or you can hear the vibration, and you can feel it change. Well, what's that? It's almost always some kind of wound or trauma or old memory. Um, so that actually informs our chakra. So if there's something out here, there's definitely something in here, and the two correlate, okay? I'm not a scientist, but I'm trying to explain it so hopefully it makes some sense. So that you can also go past that and say, wow, mm, I don't like being next to that person and keeping them away from your energy field, right? Because you can, we can all feel. People who are negative or angry can really affect us. And this brings us to another concept called entrainment. And entrainment is, you might have heard this, um, based in physics, goes back to 1600. I can't remember the, the name of the scientist off the top of my head right now. Um, but he noticed that if there was a clock like and it was a grandfather clock and then there was another or it was a clock anyway and they were in the same room they started to synchronize that's called entrainment that's uh, you know basically so this idea of being in someone else's energy field and picking very much up on that energy like watching a bad movie i i, I can't a lot of us empaths can't stand any movies with violence in them why because it's visceral, we can feel it. I mean, ugh. I, I, I always say to my husband, I said, there's so much violence out there in the real world, who wants to watch it? I, I just don't understand that. So um, anyway, I, I, I'm gonna guess that many of you are there as well. So here we are, and we're walking energy fields, and we wonder why we're not healthy when we feel physically ill, or when we're feeling down. And yet all of these things inform our health all the time. We just aren't trained to, to think that way. We're trained to think that if you take this pill, it'll solve that problem. The only problem is it's usually what they're treating is the symptom, as I know many of you know. 
and I've done a webinar on this, um, on you know sound healing being a medicine of the future, which I, th I think it is definitely starting to, we're starting to see more of that in this world, more and more, which I think is good. Western medicine has its place and it can do amazing things when things are broken. But a lot of the times it's deeper than that. So talking about polarity again. So you get the, the polar opposites there of, of needing that positive and negative charge as well, needing to be grounded through all of that. We can't get our energy going if we don't aren't even connected. Um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? I guess I covered a lot of this. Um, yeah, so also the opposite of allowing and controlling. So I know for me, I've wanted to control things so a lot in my life. I'll, I'll, I'll fully admit it. I'm, I've been and, and I'm working through being a control freak. I mean, I hate it when tech doesn't work for me. I mean, I feel it's one of the things that really upsets me because I want it to work and I want it to work now. I don't want to mess with it. Uh, so anyway, but you, you probably all have your, your thing. But what I have just discovered is the more I release my need to control, the more I allow for the positive energy to flow through me, the more I am attuned to my environment, the more I hang out in nature where just by, by itself, by nature, I mean, nature, we say it's natural, right? We're, we're in our natural habitat, right? Well, there's a reason for that. The nature is full of that positivity and the ebb and the flow and the positive and the negative. And and we need that more now than ever. And, and I think the pandemic has shown this, that many of us have actually had more time to be with our families or to be out in nature. And we haven't had to do the commuting. I know I do not miss the commuting. I just, I never enjoyed being in a car traveling somewhere, especially in traffic. It's just very impersonal and very dry and stress producing. Who wants that? I'll be in nature any day. So allowing the flow and becoming empowered from the center, from the inside out. So, so important for us, especially as empaths. We have to learn to set our boundaries and leave, leave what doesn't belong to us. I know many of you know that. So, you know, instead of trying to convince people, we just start to be who we really are. That's that wonderful connected place. And one thing I know we can do is choose. We have choices all the time. We can choose to grow or we can choose to stay where we're comfortable. And I talked about this in the last live that, that um, that's difficult for many of us. I, I admit it. I'm, I'm kind of winging it today and I don't know if it's making sense I just know I wanted to share these things with you and it's not comfortable because I wanted to be prepared <laughs> so anyway um, we can you know fall into that that trust of tuning into ourselves and it's not selfish we you know it's it's just not we, we can't take care of others if we don't take care of ourselves are we open or closed are we in flow are we open to what's possible? And are we willing to invest in our growth? Well, one thing I know is that sound healing is very efficient and it can create change very quickly. And it can do so more, even more with one-on-one. -on -one. Believe, if I wouldn't known about this, I, I would still be struggling terribly, but I'm here to pass on what I know. And hopefully it will benefit you from my years of struggle and the learnings that I've had. No matter what the modality, we know that when we clear our blocks, small miracles can happen. And gradually everything in our lives can change from the quality of our relationships to our mood and our physical well-being. It's all connected. 
And so what I want to leave with you today is that I do still have one opening, and it's on a first come first serve, and it's just forty-seven dollars, which is half off, half the cost of a massage. And just think of it: how many times have you had a massage, and then two weeks later you go, "Gee, I'm ready for another one." This actually releases things, and sometimes just like that. Sometimes it takes longer. It just depends. But you can have two hours with me and experience a small group sound bath with some individual attention to move through specific blocks. And you'll have the power of the group to assist, which is also extremely powerful. I also want to let you know that I'm thinking of offering a really large discount to those of you who want to go even deeper to help work more long-standing issues. They're either emotional or physical. You can have six sessions in a small group that meets every other week for $4.95. That's six sessions. Um, so I can't remember how many months that is every other week, but you can, you can do the math. And I have payment plans available. I think that's three months. Anyway, feel free to call or reach out to me if you're interested in any of these possibilities. And I will also leave my booking link for the small group experience down below in the comments today. Um, and as always, if you have questions um, or comments, you can leave them here in the chat or private message me if you feel like you'd rather do that. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. It was a little longer today, but I, I did want to share with you my thoughts um, for today. And um, I hope to see as many of you as, as can attend the live sound bath again on Sunday, which I will also be offering at 4 o'clock Pacific time. And uh, if you can't catch that, if you're in another part of the world, you can always catch the replay. All right. Well, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye for now.